Hi, my name is Adam. I'm a composer and I used to be a longtime Logic user. I switched over to Reaper about two or three years ago. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about why. And then if you're a Logic user, I'm going to teach you how to make change some settings to make it feel a little more familiar to what you're used to. And maybe it'll be just enough to get you off the ground running uh, using Reaper and learning how to do it. So real quickly, why I switched over from uh, Logic to Reaper, well, the, there's a few reasons. Um, I, I always get a little frustrated when somebody tells me that I can't do something. Um, and I was running into little minor things in Logic that I couldn't do, little adjustments that I wanted to make, tweaks that I wanted to make, and it was just not possible. And the more I learned about Reaper, the more I realized that it was completely customizable. I mean, there's still maybe a few things that I would I, w I wish out of them, but for the most part, it is complete it is very customizable, by far the most customizable DAW I've ever used. And I could just really tailor it to make it perform exactly the way I wanted, wanted to. Um, the other thing that was happening was about three years ago, the new Mac Pros didn't exist. So the only high-end uh, Macintosh was the those little trash can. Um, and at that point, it was like five years old, the trash can. They hadn't updated it. So I was looking to spend a whole bunch of money on a relatively old computer. And I was just kind of getting a little sick of Apple's uh, practices for a variety of reasons. So I started to look into building a Windows computer and different DAWs that were Windows uh, uh, compatible. And Reaper is both Mac and PC. It's it's very customizable. It's a relatively low price point. It just checked all the b boxes that I was looking for. So I dove in. Now I'm going to say off the bat that uh, I've, I've used a lot of DAWs in my past and I'm pretty quick when it comes to picking up new ones. I expected to learn Reaper fairly f quickly, and it wound up taking a lot longer than I expected. So uh, I wish somebody had made a video just like this uh, back when I was learning it, because it would have saved me a lot of time. Um, there's definitely a learning curve, even after this video. There's Your, your, your brain needs to be reconfigured uh, a little bit before you start to realize why things are set up the way they are. But once you get past that, um, it's very comfortable DAW to work in and to make tweaks and changes and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna open, open up what I hope is a default Reaper. Um, yeah, this is more or less what a default Reaper looks like. Now it's saying I haven't registered, but that's because I'm uh, opening a, it up as a portable install. I have actually registered to pay for the real version of Reaper. Um, but just so you know, the this window pops up um, and it makes you wait five seconds. But once you do p wait five seconds, uh, it is the full version of Reaper. So it's not limited in, in any way. So still evaluating. And this is the basics. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our audio system working and we're going to get our MIDI system working. So I'm going to go into options and preferences. We're going to change the audio device. I'm going to use this one, direct sound. I'm going to use my input, which is the, the interface that I'm using. I'm not going to worry too much about that. 24 bit, let's make it 48. Okay. Okay. So our audio is set up. Let's, let's configure our MIDI devices. Now, all of these are the MIDI devices that Reaper is scanning and rec recognizing, but they're all disabled right now. So if we wanted to enable them either as an input on this window or an output on this window, we would need to do that here. I'm gonna just enable my basic one as an input right there, and then now we're good. So this is the mixer window. This is the transport. This is the track window. This is how Reaper is set up by default. Some people use it looking just like this. I'm going to make it look a little bit closer to logic and the way that a little closer to how I use it. Um, but before we do that, we're going to uh, uh, make a few tweaks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add two tracks. I'm going to just double click right here. One, two, adding two tracks. I'm going to call this MIDI 
synthesizer or something like that. And I'm going to call this um, audio record. Okay. So we can see that these two tracks showed up down here on the mixer window and they're up here on the arrange window. What I'm going to do is, because we're going to be making a whole bunch of changes to the mixer window, I'm going to save this as a default screen set. So if we never need to, if we want to see our track and, you know, just like move our faders up and down, just like a traditional mixer, we can do that. Um, but by default, it's going to look a little different, a little closer to logic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, increase this so we can see. These are the uh, uh, effects that we can add. These are the sends and the receives that we can add. And let's just save this as a, uh, as a screen set. So we're going to go to View, Screen Sets, Mixer. It's already there. I'm not sure why. But I'm going to do Save. I'm going to call it Mixer, Last Focus Mixer. Boom. So now if we ever hit F8, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like this window with all of our tracks listed right there and our master fader right there. Okay, now let's make some changes. So the first thing actually I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the transport up at the top, just like logic, pretty easy fix. We just right click it. We go to uh, docked transport position and we go to top of main window. Now it pops up there, just like logic. Okay, now back to the mixer. You see this little tab right there that says Mixer? If I click this and I hold my click, now I can move it around. I can move it on this side, I can move it to the top, or I can move it on this side, which is what I'm gonna do. And this is gonna look a little closer to Logics once we're done. Now, it's, 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 real, it's squeezed in right here on the side, so we need to open it up and we're gonna make a few changes. I'm gonna right click right here, which is in, still in the Mixer window, and there's a few things that we're gonna check and a few things that we're gonna uncheck. The first thing we're gonna uncheck is this one, show multiple rows of tracks when size permits. Uncheck that. And then the next thing we're gonna check is we're gonna go to master track, show on right side of mixer. So you're gonna see that the master track popped over here to uh, uh, basically next to the arrange window. Okay. And then now we're basically just going to take this and we're going to make it so that we just see one track. And I'm using my eyeball. There's no other quick way to do it. But now I just see this track that's called MIDI synth. And if you notice, when I click, click around, it's, it changes. Audio record, MIDI synth. Audio record, MIDI synth. That's how we want it. Okay. And before we move on, we're going to save this one now as a screen set, just like how we did with the mixer. Um, so we go up, same place that we did before. We go to screen sets, view, then screen sets. And we go here, save. I'm going to call this default, save, and that's it. So now if we hit F7, it will look like this. If we hit F8, we'll see the mixer just like that. We can switch back and forth. Also, if we ever close this and open up a brand new setting and want it to look like this, you can just hit F7 and it's going to reconfigure itself to look just like this. Now, I like to save. I like to get a basic uh, uh, template uh, uh, set up more or less how I like it and then save that as my default template. So whenever I open up a brand new session, it looks uh, uh, the way I want it to, um, but that's probably going to be for another video. Okay. Now, before I start adding some synths or recording any audio, uh, I want to uh, reconfigure the look of this on the arrange window a little bit. Specifically, what I want it to look like if we go to if we right click on the track, we go to track layout, track panel. I want it to look like the one that says B, which has a lot more inputs and outputs shown to us, whereas this one's hiding some stuff. Okay, so let's make it so that it does that by default. So any new track that we that we add, it has some audio, some ins and outs uh, 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 showing just like that. Actually, I'm going to go to Options, Layouts, uh, Track Panel, and I'm going to make it so that the default is B. 
So now any new track that we add, defaulting to having all of these little buttons right here. Some of them we're going to be talking about in a little bit. OK, so let's add a MIDI synth. So if I click on the MIDI synth track, this over here changes. If I click up here, now I can add an effects. Uh, and what I'm going to add is I'm going to add a Tal Noisemaker or Tal Noisemaker. It's a good little free MIDI synth. And if I hit on my keyboard, nothing happens because we need to change this to be more of a MIDI track rather than an audio track. Right now it's listening to input one and we want it to be input MIDI. And I'm going to choose my keyboard, all channels. So now if I hit it, my keyboard, still nothing's happening because basically it doesn't know to listen for it. So I need to input the record arm. And then now we have sound. If we wanted to add some reverb, we could just click right here. Um, we could just add one of Reaper's reverbs and make it bigger. If I want to, there's some key commands. I don't want to get too deep into some of the key commands, but if I want to disable it, I shift click it. Or if I want to delete it, I alt click it. Um, but that's basically basic functionality. Okay, so we've got our MIDI set up. We've got our input, which is MIDI, which is my MIDI keyboard, and it's working. Everything's working. Whether it's record enabled, we'll, we'll tell whether it is uh, uh, listening for me, but let's, uh, uh, let's do some audio, audio recording. So right now it's recording my voice. What I did was I, rec I turned the record monitoring off because we don't want to hear some weird duplicate uh, um, of my voice, but you can see that it's recording the microphone that I'm speaking into right now. And uh, let's just do some quick recording. So I'm going to hit the record button on the transport. It's going to start recording right away. And there we are. Okay. It's saying select files to save or delete, and then it's also this window. I don't really like this window. I like it to just record, save the files by default. I'll worry about them later. So I'm going to unselect this prompt, unselect that prompt. Now it's still going to save everything, but it's just not going to prompt me about it every single time. Cool. Let's record some MIDI. Hit record. Record up here on the transport. It's going to start recording right away. and. There we are. Mute my voice. OK, so we've got our audio there. We've got our MIDI there. Let's do some quick MIDI editing. Now, just like Logic, I can double click the MIDI and a, uh, a window that's similar to the piano roll opens. We see our velocity. We see the MIDI notes, them st they st starting and stopping. If we needed to change it to a new MIDI event, like the mod wheel, we could do that here velocity. We could edit our velocity. There's plenty, plenty more. I could be talking about all of these different functions. Um, but that's it by default. Um, and let's just talk a quick, quickly about sends and receives, and then we will talk about bouncing, and that will be more or less it. So let's say I wanted to send to a new track that I'm going to call reverb. And then let's add this reverb right now. And I want this MIDI, actually I'll do my audio, I'll do my recording. And I want to send myself to, uh, 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 to this reverb track now. So there's a few different ways to do it, but the easiest way, in my opinion, is to just take this routing uh, 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 icon right there and to just drag it down. And we drag it into the track that we want, and that automatically creates a send. We can reconfigure this any way we want, but by default, this should automatically work. It's going to start recording right away, and there we are. Let's make the reverb a little bit bigger so we can 
make it a little obvious, more obvious, and we'll take the dry off and we'll make the wet a little louder so we can. So there it is. It's going to start recording right away. When I turn the reverb signal down, we can do it right here, or we could do it in the FX it's send. It's going to start recording right away. And there we are. If we want to add the effect, I'm going to mute the reverb. If we want to add the effect right away, or, or right on the uh, um, audio track, we just do it here the same way. It's going to start recording right away. This little checkbox, it makes it either enabled or unenabled. It's going to start recording right away. And there we are. And that's pretty much it. Now, let's just do a quick bounce. So in Reaper, they're called render. So I could, I could go to file render, which is also control alt R. And it's going to ask me, where do I want to put it? Let's just, um, Let's just throw it there. It's going to ask me, what do I want to call it? I'm going to call it test render. It's going to ask me how long do I want to do it? I, I made a selection right here. So I'm going to make it custom time range, which is from 0, 0 to 8 seconds, 0.59 right there. And it's going to ask me sample rate and wave file and all that kind of stuff. Let's just change the sample rate to 48K. And then we, then we render it. Boom. And we're done. So that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I could go a lot deeper um, in, in all my different Reaper. Uh, 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 changes that I make for my tracks, just so everybody knows, this is uh, what what my default looks like, which is a little more advanced, and I've spent a lot more time tweaking it. Um, I've got everything color coded. I've got some custom actions right here in the MIDI window. I've got some custom actions up there. Uh, you know, I've I've got some more advanced stuff going on. Um, the 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 colors are tweaked a little bit. The the template is tweaked a little bit, but more or less by default, it's it's pretty much the same. We've got our master fader over there, our track fader over there. Um, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this was useful to somebody out there. Maybe you're making the switch and you're used to logic and you want things to get uh, a little, be a little more familiar for you as you get uh, uh, started. You can, um, Put some comments down below if you want me to cover anything more specifically in the future. If you have any questions, uh, I, I can't at, answer everybody's questions, but I'll, I'll get to the ones that I can. Um, thank you, everybody. Goodbye.